In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to composite an image in Photoshop that was rendered in 3ds Max with a material ID. So this is the basic render here. You can see everything's a little flat. Uh, there's not a lot of detail in the shadows of the trees, and there's not a lot of contrast to the image. So that's the basic image. And then I also rendered this material ID, which looks like this, which um, only works if you have the render element set up in 3ds Max. And also, each material in 3ds Max has to be assigned a, a particular ID. So each ID stands for a different color. So this pink would be one color, green would be another, and so on. So what you can do is take that initial render and just duplicate it a few times. Um, I'm going to duplicate it once for each different um, color or each different material in the rendering. And then you can simply go in and say select, and then you can do a color range. And using, um, I, used, I like to set this at the default, which is 32, but you can then select a color, say um, invert, OK. And then if you go to one of those duplicated layers, you can then say edit, cut, and that'll leave just that uh, material with just that ID available to you. So once you have that ID, if the um, image isn't behind it, you can then rename it, and you can also go up here and go to Image Adjustments, and you can start adjusting these different qualities of it. So one really nice one is the shadow and highlights. You know, you can increase the 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 brightness of the shadows. You can also go in and you know just increase the overall brightness um, or the overall contrast. And then another really good one is vibrance, um, hue saturation, or also color balance. And this will allow you to change the kind of color qualities of it. So if it wants to be, if you want it to be a little more uh, yellow, you can add yellow or a little more blue. Um, so you basically want to do this with each of the different materials until you have a, an entire uh, uh, re uh, rendering or image that's uh, suitable for you. So um, you do that for each one of them, and eventually you end up with something like this. I would recommend doing the larger materials first and then working your way down to the smaller details so this would be you know changing the grass and the ground and I've already done this so I'm not going to go through each one um, changing this kind of uh, piece here um, you can also if you uh, render out the alpha channel another way to do this is if you go to select um, if you did uh, if you save this as a TIFF with alpha channel you can select the alpha channel I don't have it here but I also have this as the alpha channel so you can select um, color range and just select all of that and delete out the background from the image and then swap in a new background so you can see I have this um, I just have this image that I took from the site and that's going to be my background so I'll go my rendering will go in front of that and then each of the different um, adjusted materials go behind that you can see I added a little detail to the trees by using shadow highlights um, and then you know brought these ones a little darker um, and then I added people in the end. And then once all your layers are set and you're happy with the colors and the, the contrast and the brightness of everything, um, you can flatten it and start adding some larger effects. So for example, this is the final rendering. And to go from that last step to this step, I, I used filter um, and lens correction, which is a really great filter. And then under lens correction, if you go to custom, there's this nice vignetting option so you can actually add a kind of darker border which mimics a photograph so cameras when you take these wide angle images often get dark around the edges and this may be a little too extreme but that'll add a little bit of darkness and kind of focus your attention and your eye at the center of the image the other thing I've done is add a filter uh, blur and I did a tilt shift blur um, and what the tilt shift blur does, it'll blur the top of the image and the bottom of the image, and you can change, you know, the amount here. You can also change the amount over here um, with some other settings. But that'll basically, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. We'll add a little blur at the edges as well, so it'll focus your attention once again on the middle. So you can see the difference um, in the composited image with the different uh, um, layer values and, and brightness contrast, and then finally with these final layers put onto it. So that's how you basically composite an image. Um, yeah, usually I've kind of avoided the people shadows here, but you can add little shadows if you want to the people. Generally with people, you want to make their eye level. You know, obviously for the kid, it's okay if he's down there, but generally the eye level should always be within this uh, equal range here so that it's the same eye level as the camera.